Ian, um, could you start perhaps by giving us a, a potted history of uh, the illustrious career of Double R Glass and Roofing Systems Limited? Sure. Um, well, the company was formed in October 2000. Uh, my wife Judy and I joined in uh, March 2002. At that time, we were producing glass sealed units and conservatory roof kits from a 1500 square foot unit. We quickly realised that uh, we needed to, to develop the company, we needed to grow. We, so 15 years, a lot of growth, a um, lot of developments. Obviously you've, you've been in a business partnership with, with EdgeTech now for, for over 10 years, but what was the size of the company back in those days? How, how many units, for instance, were you producing a week? Uh, back in back in 2002, we were producing small numbers. We had small customer base, one major customer, but small customer base apart from that. Uh, so our, our unit, we were very much a manual line. We manually cut glass. We did everything manually. We've we, we've our threefold increase in the number of sealed units, yeah. um, and uh, decisions made to go along the uh, along the route of super spacer. But obviously, you saw the potential of the flexibility for conservatory roof units absolutely you know very early yeah. um, and was it a natural progression to start looking at you know conventional units and that as your, your standard warm edge offering to go from an aluminium bar operation to, to using a flexible spacer and a different type of production method uh, it, you know, it is a bit of a, a jump yeah. um, but having made that decision and ha having benefited us so much on the shaped units when we came to having to decide about the warm edge spacer, there was really no hesitation. It was it was just a natural progression. And, and do you feel that decision has been justified? I mean, has Edge Tech contributed positively to your growth down the years? A absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Our relationship with Edge Tech, I think, has has been uh, has been hugely beneficial to us. Well, thanks for that. And I, you know, I have to say, it's it's very much a two way thing. And if we move on to to Gina. She is a marvelous piece sure. of equipment. Um, we were producing a lot of units um, manually. I think we peaked at over 1,200 units in a day on a manual operation. Um, but that, that came with a 24-hour working pattern and a lot of blood, sweat and tears. And we realised at the time that we had to do something about, about automation. Uh, I think it was without doubt the right thing for us to do. I think the timing was right. Obviously, you then spoke with... Joe Haig and Pharrell and, and were able to come up with a design brief, this is what we want. And they have absolutely delivered what they said they were going to do. When you decided I'm going automation, was it yes I'm going to do it with Superspace or no I'm going to look and, and see what's the right thing to do? No, I'm, I, I'm actually kind of shocked when I think to myself that we never ever considered an alternative spacer. Uh, we, we looked, we considered lines but it was always on the basis that there was going to be a Superspacer line. I can remember going to, to EdgeTech's, I think it was Swallowgate uh, facility, yeah. uh, and, and it was a fairly small unit uh, and not many people employed there. And to see the transition in, I don't know, 10 years into what EdgeTech has become and, 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 and to be part of EdgeTech's history for the last 10 years, that's, that's, that's quite amazing.